Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now this next pattern is another one from Dave Hughes' 1986 book, American Fly Tying Manual. And I really should do a review of this book because I've found myself going to it time and time again here lately. It's a little bit of an instruction manual, but mostly it's just a pattern index. It's got almost 300 flies in it, some really cool looking American flies. So about tonight's pattern, it's a fluttering caddis. You can find the fluttering caddis patterns all over the place out there. What makes this one a little bit different is mink tail. The down wing is mink tail. Now this isn't a real exotic material and it's not expensive at all, but it is a little bit hard to find. I looked online and found you know, a few vendors in the UK. The only vendor I found in the United States was whitetailflytying.com. As of September 2020, they had some, and I found several of them on eBay. So it's available out there if you'd like to try it. If you don't have any mink tail, use whatever you use for caddis wing. Deer hair or elk hair will be fine. So Dave Hughes, fluttering caddis. It's a pretty cool pattern. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the fluttering caddis. Common size for this is a as big as a size 10 and probably as small as an 18. Now one thing I want to note here, I don't really like the proportions on this one. This is the last one I tied. So this one I'm about to do, I'm going to try and put the wing a little bit farther back and give me room for just a couple more wraps of that hackle. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to tie this on a size 12. It's a 1x long dry fly hook. I'm using black 70 denier UTC. I'll put a base all the way down to the tail. Let's put a little wax on our thread. Now the dubbing. Synthetic Superfine in brown olive. Doesn't have to be super fine, but any kind of fine synthetic is going to look best. It's a very thin body. So I'm going to dub on about two inches, maybe three inches here. And it's pretty flat. If you have a, a taper at all, that's fine. Just a slight taper toward the, at the top end. So take a couple of wraps right there, and I'm good. Take it all the way up to the front. And what is that fiber in there? That's not part of my super fine. Well, it is gone now. Okay, I think that body looks fine. Now here's an interesting part of this fly. The tail on this one in the original pattern I'm looking at is mink tail. Now, surely you have mink tail, right? Isn't this one of the most common materials that all fly tires have? I'm kidding, not many people have. It's not expensive. I got this one, Gordon Griffith's Fishing Tackle. It was $6. I have no idea where I got it. From using it, it's really cool stuff, but from using it, the only thing I could think that might match it is some really fine deer hair. So you will want to put it in your stacker, but this, this stuff stacks really well. So take your time pulling it out. It will, it will fall on you. See, it did not want to stay, but let's see if that is stacked well enough. I think it is. Let's pull, we pull one of those really long ones out. Okay, so measure your, your length of the tail just past the bend of the hook. Probably going to be about right there. Let's see if we can tie that in right there. We'll do a little pinch wrap, pull it under the back. Um, that's a medium tight wrap. And what I've had to do, I put a couple of tight wraps, but then I've had to put one under it just to prop it up a little bit because this will lay completely flat if you let it. So let's prop this up with one wrap right under it and then see how that looks okay i think that's going to look fine i'm going to go ahead and take a tight wrap right here so it doesn't try to spin on me when i cut this off so reach in here and cut this as close as you can get it okay 
I think uh, that's going to look fine. I'm going to put just a little bit of wax on my thread right here and then try to bury these in on up to the eye just to create a little flat, flat base for wrapping the hackle. Now the hackle on this is a medium or dark done and a good bit, a little bit bigger than a hook gap in length. So I think this piece I got measured here stripped off several of the fibers. So I've got a bare stem. I'm going to tie it in right there with the concave side toward the hook. Several wraps just to get that good and tight. And we'll snip off this excess. Take my thread back up here to where I'm going to finish wrapping this hackle. And let's just wrap it. Should be able to get six, maybe more wraps. So let's take two wraps behind this, lock this one in, and I'm going to go ahead and snip this before I wrap up the head. Okay, we might have a few to push back, but I don't think I think we did okay here. We don't have a whole lot of fibers pointing out over the eye of the hook. We might have one right there that I'm about to trap, but Okay. I think we've got some room for the whip finish. I'm going to give this a clockwise spin just to tighten up this thread a little bit. only got like one sticking forward right there. I'm going to put my scissors in here and poke them through. I'm not going to snip them, just poke them. And we'll take care of this cleanup. Drop a head cement and this guy will be done. So the fluttering caddis with the mink tail wing. So it's a pretty cool looking pattern. I think it's going to do well here in the mid-Atlantic and any, anywhere else you fish it. So that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.